Pastor Bill Evans, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church in Chetwin, B.C. Um, glad to invite you to a service put on by our Chetwin Ministerial where we can share uh, the story of Jesus and his love. Uh, people are a little upset saying that COVID is a conspiracy by the government to stop us from preaching. They have only told us you couldn't gather together. We have been, we got Chet TV putting our message out around town here and people are picking that up all over the country, different places. We got uh, a radio station up at our church now. We do the Sarera's place and such like. Uh, God is good and in control. Um, so I'm delighted to uh, share uh, today uh, uh, some thoughts. Uh, I've used them in my own church, but um, uh, it's, there's the one thing that makes the Christian faith different than all other religions of the world, and it's the fact that our founder has no tombstone with his name written on it, the date he died, and rest in peace. And um, so uh, that's, that makes us different. All the other religions of the world, their founders is tucked in a, in a, in a grave there somewhere. And so in Matthew chapter 27, we have the account of uh, Jesus' burial. And I just want to start off reading a few little verses here, if I may, and then we will we'll carry on. And um, find the page here. Here it is. It says, when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea. So Jesus has died. And uh, Joseph, named, uh, named Joseph, who himself had become a disciple of Jesus, this man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the entrance of the tomb and went away. Um, that's the story we want to consider today. Uh, all four Gospels of, of the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four account the story of uh, Jesus being buried. Uh, it's vitally important to our Christian faith because he was buried, but we know that's a Good Friday story. But on uh, the Sunday, he was found raised from the dead. And um, so we want to think about that thought this morning, but by today. But the, the idea is we want to consider is the man from the uh, borrowed tomb. The question in my mind I posed is, um, did Jesus know? Well, we say he's God in the flesh, so he knew everything that was happening to him, going to happen to him. He knew the horrors of crucifixion, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, situation before we finish. Uh, not the horrors of blood and the gore, but uh, just uh, that he knew it and such. But the idea of uh, what was happening and what was going to happen. Uh, he knows Joseph is going to ask to take the body and whatever, but he's hanging upon the cross and uh, he is, uh, knows what he's there for. The Bible tells us very plainly that he, he came, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, I have a wedding this uh, coming up soon here and uh, we talk about love. And love is a giving. It's, it's, a, it's it, love just to itself is not. It, it, love is an is an action, and so God so loved, He gave, and He gave His Son uh, to to the world to save people like Pastor Bill, uh, to save uh, people uh, like Marlon, my friend here, and to help us have relationship with Him. That's why He came. So the man from the borrowed tomb. He borrows a tomb, um, and it, so, so there was no tomb left, and, and whatever. But I first want us to consider this thought about his crucifixion, he was killed by human reason. He was killed by human reason. Why, why would we say he was killed by human reason? Well, the scriptures portray that with the crucifixion, he, uh, the, the Jewish leaders uh, were pretty upset with Jesus. Um, some people talk about something is perfect. I said, well, there was only ever one thing perfect in the world, and we crucified it, and uh, it was Jesus. And, and Matthew 26 uh, to, uh, we have a passage here that I want to just read again uh, a little bit of. And it makes this statement and it says, here's the Jewish people talking to uh, Pilate about uh, Caiaphas, the high priest, about Jesus' trial. It's, but Jesus kept silent. And then the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. I demand that you tell us whether or not you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, you've said it yourself. Oh, you, yeah, that's it. You, you, you're right what you say. Nevertheless, I tell you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And then the high priest tore his clothes and his robes and said, he is blasphemed. What further do we have of, need do we have of witnesses? Uh, behold, you have heard how he blasphemes. 
what do you think? And they answered, he deserves death. Human reason says blasphemy was a, uh, the sin that Jesus had done. Simply by saying he was the son of God. In John chapter 5, and John wrote quite a bit later than, the, than Matthew did, it seems. He was a younger man of, in the disciples of Jesus, the 13 at the table. And he, he wrote later. And he says, um, Jesus called himself the son of God. And the Jews said, you can't do that. That makes you equal with God. And a son equal to the father in the mind of the Jewish people. And here we have, you can't talk like that. That's blasphemy. He needs to be put to death, they said. Um, in John chapter 19, uh, another angle comes up. And in here we have one, and we hear stuff that people uh, talk about things. Uh, he, he said he's guilty. He's against the state. He's against the state, so we got to get rid of him. Um, here we have in 19 verses 14 and 15 um, these words. John chapter 19, the gospel story there. And it says... Um, it says, now it was the day of preparation for the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, behold your king. So they cried out, away with him, away with him. Pilate said to him, shall I crucify your king? And they, they, he said, we have no king but Caesar. This man can't be our king. We have no king but Caesar. He tried to be king in place of Caesar. And so he, he tried to overrule the state. Gamaliel in the book of Acts, Paul talks and there's persecution going on of the Christians uh, sharing the story of Jesus. And he says, guys, there's been other uprisings tried to take over the states. Never happened. If God's in it, uh, in their movement, you can't stop them. And if he's not in it, it'll fall down. And so why worry about it? And so here we have them wanting to crucify Jesus because they said he was against the state. And the other part is that we want to note there is that um, people said, well, you know, and, and, and the gospel very plainly show Mary and the other followers of Jesus, they went and they saw. They saw him put in the grave. They saw how he was lying. They saw how the clothes were because that's important for Sunday morning. The clothes were not there and the napkin that was over his face was folded up and left. And these women saw these things, and these accounts are written down for us. But he had to be in the tomb. That's why they came on, on Sunday morning. They rested on the Sabbath, we're told. They said they saw him go to the tomb. They saw him, the big roll, stone roll to the door. They saw all those things. They prepared the preparation stuff on Friday. And then Sunday morning, they came to go do something at the tomb. We can talk to the soldiers and see if they'll let us in to see his body and whatever. They believed he was still there because they hadn't grasped what he was about. And so it was human reason that crucified Jesus. But the next point we want is that he was delivered by God. In Acts 2, we have an interesting statement uh, going on there. And this is after Pentecost and whatever. And Peter has been filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And he's got a message. And in verse 23, he's got this. Remember, Peter was the guy denying Jesus. I don't know the man. And he was scared. and He was afraid and all those things. But here we have in verse 23 of Acts chapter 2, this statement made by Peter. This man, delivered over by the determined plan and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to the cross. It says, God had the plan, but you did it. And he was talking to the Jewish people because they pushed for it. The Romans were the guys that drove the nails in his hands. The Romans were the guys that spat on him. The Romans were the guy that hit him. The Romans were the guys that hung him up and, and dropped that post in the ground and jar him and stuff like that and, uh, and whatever. But Jesus, was, uh, Peter says, uh, with the spirit of Jesus in his heart after the resurrection, he says, uh, God de delivered him. Uh, to you by the determined plan that he had. Uh, remember, God so loved the world that he gave. This is what he gave, his only begotten son. And, and Peter says, you are, are guilty of this man, a determined plan and foreknowledge of God. You nailed to the cross by the hands of godless men, and you put him up against, uh, put him up again to an end of the agony of the death, and since it, has no, it was impossible for him to be held by it. So you put him in a situation where he had to come out of the grave, but you guys did it. You're responsible because they'd asked. Uh, their human reason had him crucified, but they said God was behind it. He let you. And what I, I told my church family is that uh, what happens how God allows evil to happen? He just stands back. And if he stands back, evil will happen. It's like a baseball glove left out in the rain and the sun. It gets dried and pretty hard to use. But you take it and you rub in some grease and some uh, stuff that endures it. And then a few bangs with the ball, throwing the ball in is good practice. And, and that's good for him. And that's what the grace of God does in the heart of man. And I challenged our people. Remember, that you've all heard, we've all heard the statement, but for the grace of God, that person could be me. Yeah, when you see somebody, just think, 
you've got grace to keep you from being the drunk in the gutter or whatever it is. And so he was delivered by God and wicked hands were taken. But God's power was shown because God had a plan to show us, um, John 3, 16, that it would be outworked. Uh, that he um, was, so loved us that he would put his son through the most awfulest, awfulest, yeah, sure, the most awful death imaginable. Why? Because any person that says, well, I can't come to Jesus, I can't come to God for forgiveness in Jesus. Why? Because I'm such an awful, awful sinner. And the awfulness of sin is as great in whatever. And but for the grace of God, any one of us are capable of it. We hear stories on the news all the time of hatred and wicked, wicked things that happen. You say, how does the heart of man do that? And God says the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who understands it? People don't, but God does. And so here, uh, when, when he says he's going to give his son for the world, he, he allows him to die the most awful death because the most awful sin. We sing a hymn that says, The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. And so we, we move to our last point. And uh, he was, uh, the, the man from the borrowed tomb was put to death by human reason. He was delivered by God uh, from the situation he'd been in. It was, it's, it's, death cannot keep his prey. Up from the grave he rose. And, uh, but the next thing is, is that he was loved by immature Christians. Um, as you go through the story, what we find about uh, Joseph of Arimathea, that he was a man who was, when Jonathan tells us that, says he was a secret Christian. You know, I struggled with that when I was a young man, being a secret Christian. The guys I worked with, in fact, it helped my, my, my call to seminary. I said, God, help me, stop me from being a preacher. Help me to be a better witness to my guys at work, my friends at work. I was like a secret Christian. And, you know, this secret Christian here had a secret faith with Jesus, but he also had a great love for Jesus. And his most precious thing is he had this tomb dug out, out of stone by himself, for, for himself. And then he had that tomb, and he offered it to Jesus. Does he know he's getting it for the weekend? I don't think so. And uh, so he's got it for the weekend. Uh, he's giving it to Jesus. He gives us all to Jesus. And then that's what's really, uh, really interesting for us. Um, Matthew, who wrote to the Jewish mind in his story of Jesus, uh, Isaiah 53 uh, is, is a place where it says about Jesus was with, the, with, was with wicked men in his death, but in his grave he was with the rich. And he, as a rich man gives him a grave uh, to use, uh, to put that body in. Not grasping, we don't think fully, because many other stronger Christians sure didn't catch on what was happening. On his grave, this man uh, lent him a tomb. There was no name to be put on it, didn't have time, whatever, but he was rich. In Mark chapter 15, we're told he was a prominent man. He was actually one of the Sanhedrin who voted against crucifying Jesus. It says very plainly, he voted against crucifying Jesus. And, uh, but he was bold enough to go ask for the body, and he got it. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15, and I'll close as I read those. And uh, it's an interesting passage uh, of the challenge then that um, 2 Corinthians 5 is where we have our ministry verse, for we don't preach ourselves but Christ Jesus as Lord. But far further on down that chapter, it makes this statement. It says, for the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that if one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Joseph of Arimathea, immature in his Christian faith, afraid to share it, but he um, gave his, his best to Jesus. Jesus wants us to serve him with that hard attitude. He died for me, I want to live for him. I challenge you to take those thoughts and consider them today.